Hi everybody and welcome back to my fortnightly sky update on the occasion of the new moon in Cancer which is happening at just after midnight on the 6th of July, that's what I have here anyway. Um, four minutes past midnight on the 6th of July, feeling like the evening of the 5th. Um, that's UK time, so just adjust that to your time zones. Well, um, it's an interesting sky. There's a, there's a lot of good in the sky, but there are also some major things going on at the moment, which um, I think are worth spending some time on today. And um, they're, you know, they're somewhat heavy topics, I would say. So the first thing, first things first, let's talk about the new moon. The new moon is happening at 14 degrees, 23 minutes and 35 seconds of Cancer. That means that the sun and moon are standing at 14 degrees of Cancer together in the sky. So this is heralding in a, we've already had quite a lot of Cancer going on, you know, we've had Venus in Cancer for a while, and um, Mercury's already gone through Cancer and into Leo, and um, now we've got the new moon coming in. So Venus and Mercury have definitely prepared the ground for that Cancer energy, which is a kind of opening the heart energy, you know, coming into a more emotional, nurturing place. Um, and this, this is providing a stark contrast to the nodal axis where the, all of these planets, Mercury first, then Venus, then and um, now the Sun and Moon, um, and in the last few days the Sun in particular, have squared the nodal axis which is at 10 degrees of Aries Libra. So we have the Aries side of that axis pushing people very strongly towards this kind of self-actualization, this uh, sense of being the hero in their own journey, trying to be the very best version of themselves, focusing on myself. Um, you know, going ghost and kind of becoming a warrior. This is this, this kind of um, vibe that's going on with the the airy side. You know, strengthening myself and giving myself sort of a, a position, putting myself up in a way as a rival against everybody else and as competition against everybody else, and. You know, in, in a way that's really good, in, it's empowering, but in a way it's a very lonely place to be. And on the opposite side of that axis is the other side of, of that coin, where, you know, what really we're after is connection and the approval of our peers. Well, you know, what can bridge the two of those things together? You know, okay, it you can... You can certainly get yourself noticed by self-improvement and it's important to improve yourself. It really is. It's important to respect yourself it's an and it's important to, you know, it's important to be someone in your own right and take pride in that and be strong as an individual. But we all need connection and to be honest, that warrior guy is not really, it's not really the best place to connect to people from because it may get you noticed and it may even get people to project all sorts of things onto you and you may even get some infatuations and whatever happening from that kind of uh, being the best at, 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 uh, in whatever you're doing. But um, it doesn't make for real connection, um, and it can it can get you some approval from your peers. But there is something missing from that. Um, 
And what's missing is really the vulnerability of cancer. Well, it's not just that, because there is the other side of the axis, and you know we have to think about the lessons that we learned from the full moon in Capricorn as well. Those humbling lessons about our limitations. And, um, you know, reality, like, hitting us hard. You know, Capricorn's often a, a tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, being grounded is a good thing, and humility is helpful. And it is helpful in the sense that it also gives you the it can unlock the Cancerian vulnerability which is needed to connect genuinely on a heart level to other people. So I think that this is the new, the, the, the part of the puzzle that now needs to be fit in, that cancer bit. You need to come into your vulnerability a little bit. You need to come into the place where you can connect with others from a an emotional space, from a from a space of you know, just a space of tenderness and um, vulnerability. It's only possible to connect with people in a genuine way if you're vulnerable. You know the the airy space of being the the. Strong warrior is really, it, it won't get you connection. It can get you admiration, but it won't get you connection. Not in any real way. So anyway, that's the first point. Now, there, the, the, this new moon is love, has lovely aspects to um, Mars, in Taurus, it's sextiling. It has lovely aspects to Saturn in Pisces, which is interesting. Trine aspects to Saturn in Pisces. So maybe, you know, with that Saturn that's going retrograde, and that's a humbling influence as well. That's a humbling influence, and it's also an influence which is very strongly asking us how we're going to keep our souls intact in the context of a world which makes that increasingly difficult and I'm going to talk about that in a moment and that's both from the perspective of what's happening with Neptune in Pisces and what's happening with Pluto in Aquarius and um, I think that um, you know it's a Saturn is really, at this moment of his retrograde, halfway through, you know, in the second decans of Pisces, he's really asking us, what are we going to do to keep our souls intact in this situation? Now, okay, let's, well, first of all, what does it mean to keep your soul intact? Well, for me, for me, it means not treating other living beings as objects for our gratification. I think that that's essentially what I've come up with. You know, respecting and being kind and compassionate to other living beings in as much as we possibly can. I think that is the best I can come up with. Now, you might have other ideas. And that's for you to deal with, you know. Everybody's on his own journey. You may have other ideas and Saturn may be revealing, you know, that something to you that is a, is a, little, a little bit different from, from what he's revealing to me. But that's really what I... Where, where I'm standing with it at the moment. Now, why do I say that in the context of what's going on in the collective, that this is increasingly difficult? Well, first of all, let's think about Neptune in Pisces. Neptune is now at the 
very end of the last degree of Pisces and he's going retrograde, literally got to 29 and 50, he's at 29 and 56 and he's gone retrograde. 29 degrees and 56 minutes, really just near the end. Now he's gone retrograde, so what are we learning at this critical moment about what Neptune in Pisces has been about? Well, personally, I'm, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't expect when Neptune goes into Aries that the, the world's problems will be solved, but I am nonetheless looking forward to it because I have just about had it with this endless carousel of insanity that Neptune in Pisces, as far as I'm concerned, has created. So Neptune went into Pisces in 2011, 2012, and that was the time that, you know, this social media thing really took off to, a ne to the next level. And, you know, sometimes I... Um, think that the world did end in 2012. You know, the world as we knew it ended in 2012. And, you know, the the world moved into a virtual space then, from where we were, you know, on the ground, and we were bridging a little bit with the virtual world for a while, um, for some years. But, by, you know, 2012, we moved into the virtual world like, full-time, almost. And now it has got to the point where the endless carousel of novelty and dopamine hits. And think about it, Neptune is basically the dopamine... Uh, the dopamine system, in a way, in us. Now, it's been said that Neptune is a higher octave of Venus, and I can, I can see that. Neptune is extremely pleasure-seeking. But Neptune's pleasures are, you know, more than just Venus's, let's say, simple pleasures. Neptune's pleasures are, are more exciting, more otherworldly, more glamorous. But they're also completely illusionary and um, they lead to extreme jadedness. So um, what's happened with Neptune and Pisces as far as I'm concerned is that everybody has been put onto, into the state of, a, of what used to be the, the preserve of um, like cocaine addicts and other uh, drug addicts who are using drugs that work on the, the dopamine system, you know. And like everybody, without wanting to, was kind of pushed into a situation where they're constantly on this dopamine carousel, which Frankly, I mean, I don't know how other people feel about it. Some people may, you know, be thriving in this situation. I mean, there's always some people who, you know, whatever's going on is working well for. But for a lot of us, I believe, we're ready to get off the merry-go-round of madness. The endless merry-go-round of novelty. Meaningless novelty. Pointless novelty. It's obscene. It's obscene, frankly, at this point. But I might be um, a bit in my Saturnian mood because of these Saturn transits that I'm being battered by. Now, um, I wanted to also mention the context of Pluto in Aquarius. As another additional uh, you know situation in which Saturn is asking us 
how are we going to keep a hold of, how are we going to keep our souls intact and you know Saturn rules Aquarius so Saturn is related to Pluto and um, Saturn's not the only ruler of Aquarius the modern ruler of Aquarius is Uranus but Saturn's a traditional ruler of Aquarius and because Saturn is retrograde at the moment I'm going to talk about what I think um, how I feel like that Saturn thing of how we can keep our souls intact relates to the Pluto and Aquarius situation as it's emerging. And we've had the first kind of taste of what Pluto and Aquarius is doing. And now we're retrograding and we're still at one degree of Aquarius. So we're still considering, you know, what is this Pluto and Aquarius doing? And I think that one aspect of Pluto and Aquarius is it's become clear that the freedom that we have been afforded in the Aquarian realm by, again, you know, the Aquarian realm is the realm of technology. The freedom that that's afforded us, because Aquarius is all about freedom, is, is the poison. Now, if you think about it, this came to me today. Um, if somebody is born into a very authoritarian regime, whether that's a moral regime, like a, a very religious place, okay, that puts has moral rules and you know, also puts physical restrictions on people, like you can't uh, do this, you can't do that, you can't... You know, can't meet the opposite sex, you have to cover up whatever it is, okay, you've got this sort of morally, ethically authoritarian regime which controls the way that society works, okay. If you come from something like that, it's a lot easier in a way to keep your soul intact. You, if you come, if you grow up in a place where there's complete freedom, you know, for people to interact with each other to uh, and to pursue all of the novelties and, and pleasures and everything that are available on this kind of buffet with no authority above you to say no you can't do it if you do that you're you know going to prison or if you do that you'll be socially ostracized or whatever if you're born into this situation of extreme freedom you are immediately in danger at every juncture of becoming traumatised, traumatising others. Um, it becomes very easy for you to, uh, because let's say there's no consequences to how you treat others, it becomes too easy for you to use others as objects for your gratification. There's no consequences, so why, you know, if you haven't kind of worked it out ethically, which can only only really happen through some sort of consciousness revelation, which may or may not come. I mean, it does come to some people, it doesn't seem to come to others. Some people can seem to go their whole lives without getting it, that they're not supposed to treat other people and animals as objects for their gratification. For some people, it just never seems to dawn on them. So you can, in, you know, you can be born into a situation where the struggle, the challenge to hold on to the... I'm not going to say the purity of your soul, because you know what? I do not believe that somebody who life you know, they were put within boundaries of a cage and they weren't allowed to act in any other ways. I don't think that they are morally superior. Some people seem to think that, which seems crazy to me. I don't think they're morally superior to the one that is born into a situation where they literally have to fight tooth and nail to hold on to their, um, to their soul. And, it, you know, just because somebody who has... has done bad things, just because somebody has uh, you, 
maybe degraded themselves, maybe degraded others, maybe treated people badly, maybe whatever. That does not mean, I don't think that that means that their soul is lost. It can be if, let's say, they go through their whole lives doing that. Their soul might be lost for that lifetime, I don't know, you know, if, if, if reincarnation is a thing. But, you know, they... I don't believe that, you know, just because somebody has been over to the dark side, that that means that they are soiled, ruined, it's over. No, I don't think that. I think that one has to have, if, if somebody goes through that stuff and comes out the other side and says, you know what, I choose to be better to myself, to others, that is a much greater achievement than the person who has been put in a cage. Um, and at the end of the day, neither of them has chosen it, so there's no real judgment possible in any situation. But, you know, <laughs> what I really want to say is, with this greater freedom, and this goes for everybody, because, you know, even those who do live in much stricter regimes. The technology has opened up the world to them as well. I mean, it's not its not like they're living in a bubble where, I mean, some people may, but um, for most of the world now, you know, the world has opened up and more freedom is possible because of these, this technology. And there, therein lies extreme danger. Extreme danger of harming yourself and harming others. But the point is, not, I'm, I'm not in any way recommending that this should mean that we, I, mean, I know that some people think this, but I don't think that the, the, the uh, answer to that is to uh, return, to regress, to um, placing but, you know, putting people in authoritarian regimes. Really, the ideal situation is that given all of this freedom, and maybe the point, maybe the point is that given all of this freedom, how are you going to act? And maybe, this is what I hope for, you know, once Neptune is done, with Pisces and giving us the, you know, maybe people will be so exhausted, you know, the dopamine exhaustion. Perhaps we will be so disillusioned and disappointed with all of this endless, empty novelty that they will start for themselves to look for something deeper. And perhaps having blundered having been given this freedom to act to one's fellow human being, however, um, you know, just being given so much freedom to interact and kind of, and a lot of sort of anonymous interaction and just an interaction, sorry, without accountability, without true accountability. Having... Uh, experience that and the damage that it does to ourselves and the damage that we can do to others maybe people will start to think you know what I am not into that and I have to put some boundaries ethical boundaries upon myself so that I do not do that to other people. I do not simply use people as objects for my own gratification. I do not simply abuse people because of it. I can get away with it. But I also think that it has to do with, you know, the Pluto in Aquarius, like apart from the freedom thing, we do also have to worry about the situation where you're you feeling like the uh, the bad is all in the other. You know, the world is so bad, or, you know, this group of people is so bad. Like, the shadow is all in the other. When really, you need to be able... Like, I think when... 
when there is like, like because what you see, what I begin to see with this Pluto and Aquarius is so much polarization between groups of people. You know, Aquarius is all about groups, how we organize and identify ourselves as into groups. It's the opposite of Leo, where we identify ourselves as individuals, completely as individuals. Where we identify ourselves as groups organized by category, okay? And there's so much polarization between people. And do you know how people react to it? Always, I see always, they're just pushing it onto the other person. And even people who are conscious of the shadow, I've seen people like saying, you know, oh, when they're talking about, for example, developments in politics, you know, we re society really needs to look at its shadow, but they still think that the shadow is the other view that they don't agree with. Instead of, you know what looking at your shadow would be in a social sense? It would be listening to what the other group has to say. Facing it, listening to it and trying to understand it. That would be what looking at the shadow is about in society. You have to, you can't just say that the shadow is the other side. And you know, it's like this, this, the, the battle of the sexes, which is one of these big, you know, Pluto and Aquarius things that is coming up. And if you look, at, like, I find it unbelievable if you look, both sides equally demonize the other side. And they're not listening to each other. They're not listening to each other. But when you want to confront the shadow and it's a social issue, Pluto in Aquarius, shadow in society. If you want to confront the shadow and it's a social issue, you need to listen to the people you don't like and the, what they're thinking and try and understand it. I know it's difficult, but nobody said that shadow work was easy. So anyway, that's all I have to say for today. I know, it was a bit heavy again, but this, that, that's what, oh God, and I didn't even um, mention the fact that Lilith's in, gone into Libra. So, you know, I do see, I think that um, relationships are going to be definitely an area that needs to be looked at. I would say that that's a key to all of this. How are we treating each other? Are other people objects? If other people are objects, then you are an object for other people. Just remember that. That's all I have to say. I know, I know, I know. I'm being very uh, didactic today, and I'm sorry for it, but I, I blame Saturn. <laughs> anyway, I wish you um, a very happy new moon in Cancer, and remember to come into your heart energy. Remember, um, yeah, to be vulnerable and connect. That's what cancer's all about. Take care everybody. Happy New Moon. <laughs>